I trust that you're doing well and that you're walking in victory through Jesus Christ. God has called us to a life of victory in Christ. And every time we assemble, uh, we come to hear his word so we can walk in victory from one level to the other. Uh, I'm starting um, a new series. I'm not too sure how long it's going to take, probably four sessions, uh, but I believe it will be a great blessing to you. And I'm talking about living in expectancy, living in expectancy. And my subtitle is Between Times, living in expectancy between times. Expectancy or having an expectation is important for our quality of life. When people stop having expectation, when there is no expectancy, people lose hope and life loses meaning. And so it's always important to have an expectation uh, that things are going to work out for you. And the Christian life is based on expectation. And we live our lives in expectancy. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody says there is no hope? And once people tell you there is no hope, life becomes meaningless. And that's why sometimes people feel that they have to end their lives, unfortunately. But God has called us to expectancy. Everything we do in life uh, has an expectancy. You go to sleep in, in the night and you expect to wake up in the morning and the sun will shine. And when you live throughout the day, you expect that the sun will set and there will be night. Can you imagine a day when you wake up uh, and the sun never rises. And it's 6 o'clock, it's not up. 8 o'clock in the morning, it's not up. 10 o'clock, the sun is not up. You're going to wonder, what, what, is the world coming to an end? Uh, because your expectation is that the sun will rise. The same thing. If the sun never sets, you're going to wonder what is wrong with your world. So all of us live life on expectancy. Expectancy is what you're looking forward to, your anticipation. It is your hope. Uh, and it creates excitement for our lives. And I, I, I want to encourage us that God doesn't just want us to live in expectancy. He also wants to fulfill our expectation so we don't just expect and get disappointed, but he makes our expectations real to us. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this uh, series and how our expectations become a reality. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18 and verses 13 to 14. Genesis 18, 13 to 14. I don't know whether my mic is giving us any problem. All right. And he reads, And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. God gave a promise to Abraham. And that's why Abraham left his father's house. And God said, I'm going to give you a land. And your wife, Sarah, is going to have a child, a consequential child, a child who will make a difference in this world. So Abraham and Sarah lived their life on that expectancy that they will find the land and that they will have a child. So they started a journey of faith with God with this expectation that they will have land and they will have a child. And they journeyed for a very long time, lived for a very long time. They were not finding land and they were not having children. And now Abraham is close to uh, 99 years old. He's a very old man. Sarah is very old. And God comes to him and speaks to him that now is the time to make the promise of God real to us. One of the things we have to 
uh, be very uh, firm on is that God is a God of promise. And every Christian lives his life on the promise of God. And the promise of God has got some qualities that we would look at. First, God's promise comes to us as a word. As a word, it tells us what God has in mind for us. Primarily, it comes through the scriptures. But many times, God also speaks to us in our hearts and gives an, an, us an expectancy, something to hope for, something to look forward to. Uh, and, and so God's word comes as a word. His promise comes as a word. His promise also comes sometimes as a vision. And in the vision, God tells us what he has already done in our lives. Now, when I say a vision, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see something very grand. Sometimes the voice of God to us or the promise of God to us is a very soft voice. I remember I was about 14 years old when I believed that God called me to be a pastor to preach his word and to take care of his flock. I was, I was young and there was no, I wasn't in a church, I wasn't in a prayer meeting, I didn't see a vision, uh, nobody, no prophet spoke to me, nobody just spoke to me. I was 14 years old and I remember the moment, um, it was in the night and uh, we were in our bedroom, my, my mother's bedroom where we all lived. Uh, so she, she, there are about five of us siblings and our mom and we all stayed in the same room. And I was sleeping on the floor on a mat and uh, just somehow, I, I can't even explain it, I just knew that God's hand was upon me, that God has called me and God was going to use me as a pastor. And from that day, from that night, I've never doubted that God has called me, that God wanted to use me. But that calling did not come because somebody spoke to me, but I heard it in my heart. And for many of you, that is how you're going to know God's promise to you. It's not going to come because a man of God spoke to you or you saw a big vision, but you're going to have a certain deep sense, something deep, something inside so strong that tells you this is what you're going to be. This is what your life is all about. And that creates an expectancy. And it gives you something to look forward to, something to live your life for. And for each one of us, I believe there is a point in our lives when we believe that God was going to use our life for something. It may have been similar to mine, or probably maybe somebody spoke to you about it, or you read the Bible and you felt that a word was for you, and you believe that God is going to use you greatly. If you have such a promise of God, I want you to hold on to it and I want you to live in expectancy. Everybody say expectancy. Now I want us to go to the text and we're going to examine a few things about God's promise and how it becomes real in our lives. So the verse 14, once more, Genesis 18, 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? That's a question. At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Very short verse, but heavily loaded. This passage talks about timing or time frames within which God works his purposes for us. And the first time frame that the passage talks about is the appointed time. Everybody say appointed time. Say it one more time. Say appointed time. Hey, are you in church? I'm preaching. I say, say appointed time. What's wrong with you? Say appointed time. Appointed time. All right. Okay. Now, this appointed time is very important. And, and I put the Hebrew word for, uh, for that on the screen. It's moed, moed. That's the appointed time. It's a very interesting word uh, because this word is used uh, for the ta tabernacle of gathering. You know, when God uh, was leading Israel in the wilderness, they had this big tent they called the tabernacle. And it was called the tabernacle 
of gathering. That is where they gathered and God met them. And, and that is called Moed 2, gathering. So when God talks about appointed time, it's not just sequence of time. It's a place, it's a time or a moment when time and every event comes together for things to happen in your life. The appointed time is a gathering point for God, a place of meeting and a time of meeting. You know, many times we go through our lives and it looks like things are not meeting in our lives. Things are scattered. Things are happening. And you're wondering, why am I going through this? What is all this about? Why, 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 why this and why that and why that? And your life doesn't seem to make sense. But there is a time in your future when God is going to put the pieces together. It's called your appointed time and everything comes together. And when everything comes together, everything makes sense. Now you don't get it because it's scattered. But one day, there will be an appointed time, a gathering point, a meeting point. Then you will understand why your parents were your parents, why you were born in such a time, who, why your brother is that and why your sister is that and why you even went to school and studied a particular course which you are not using. You know, and you wonder, so I wasted my life. I went to study this, I am not even using it. But when God brings you to the appointed time, it's a gathering point. He opens your eyes and you begin to understand everything makes sense in God's economy. Everything makes sense. And that's what God is saying to Abraham. He says there is a gathering point in your future. You've been walking for many years in the wilderness. You've had a lot of experiences that don't seem to make sense. Even your name doesn't make sense. You used to be Abraham. I changed it to Abraham meaning father of many nations, and you have no child. But in the appointed time, everything will come together and it will make sense. That is what the appointed time is. It's a place and a time of meeting. God's meeting point for you in your destiny. Appointed time also means a fixed season in God's plan for you. There is a fixed season, a divine season fixed by God. The word Moed translated in Genesis chapter 1, 14, when God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, it says it's for seasons. The appointed time is an appointed season for you. A season is the period when things happen. Things happen in their season. A suitable time. So what is God saying to Abraham? God is saying to Abraham, I have an appointment with you. But it's not just a calendar appointment. I have an appointment with you sometime in your future where everything is going to come together. And there is a fixed season when what I said will come to pass. I don't know about you, but as we sang just now, the God of then is the God of now. The God of Abraham is our God. If he had an appointment with Abraham, I can guarantee you he has an appointment with you. There is an appointed time for you and there is a season for you. So that's the first thing God says to Abraham. There's an appointed time for you. But there is another phrase in the passage. Let's look at it again. Genesis 1, uh, 18, verse 14. It says, At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. That's the second time frame. The time of life. It's a natural Sequence of activity. The time of life is also a point in time. A point in time. In the Hebrew, it's et. The other one is moed. This is et. A point in time. 
a point in time, God is saying to Abraham, I have a season for you. I have an appointed time for you. I have a big plan for you. Things are going to come together. And he then says, these things are going to come together at a point in time. What does that mean? You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. That's an appointment. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. When? Next week, next two weeks, next four weeks, next year, next 10 years, next 100 years. It's general. It, there's an appointment. But when, when you read the book of Galatians, it says, and when the fullness of time was up, God brought forth his son, born of a virgin. In other words, God has an appointment with time, but the appointment has a point in time when it's going to happen. So there is a point in time when God makes all things work for you. It's a point in time. Everybody say point in time. So there, God, God has a, a time of appointment for you. And then he has a point in time for you. And when that point in time comes, things work out for you. The time of life is a point in time. The time of life is also the season when things happen. It describes the natural processes which are completed. And when the natural processes are completed, things happen. In other translations of the Bible, the time of life is translated as spring or next year about this time. And the reason why uh, it's translated sometimes as spring is because spring is when things are born. After winter, spring, we don't have spring in Ghana, so. But for those guys, it's when things are born. So what, what, what it's saying is that when God wants to give you what he has promised to give you, it's going to happen at the time it should happen. It's going to happen at the time it should happen. So sometimes, when it happens, you may actually think it's a natural thing that has happened. It was supposed to happen and it happened. But it is happening because it is supposed to happen because God made it happen. And the one reason why many times God does things for us and we don't even know it's God is because it happens in the time of life. It happens at the time it is supposed to happen. You know, if you plant mangoes in Ghana, and I, I say mangoes because mangoes are nice. Yes. And all of us used to run after mangoes when we were kids. Yes. If you plant mangoes in Ghana, they will ripe in the, the mature the tree. It matures the best fruit. They ripe normally around April and May. March, April, May is mango season. And then later on, around November, December, January, it's another mango season. So that is when mangoes should ripe. All right? So that will be the time of life of a mango. When is a mango supposed to bear fruit? It's going to be somewhere around April, somewhere around December. But the one who's controlling the time of life to make it happen is God. But what is happening seems to be a natural thing that is happening, but God is behind the natural event that is happening. I hope you understand that. If your mango doesn't bear fruit, around April, May, then you wonder, what is this mango doing? I have a mango tree in my house like that. I've been watching him. I say, hey, I've invested in you. You are my land. Do something. March, nothing. April, no fruit. We are in May. We are ending May. No sign that this tree has head, that the seasons have changed. The, seas, the tree is just there. I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'll forgive you this time. I'll wait for December. 
Then if it doesn't happen, then I'll have to see what I'll do, what Jesus did <laughs> to the fig tree. When the season comes and you don't bear fruit, Jesus says, no one will eat from you again. But the no one will be me, so I can't curse my tree. I have to say, I have hope for you. But the point I'm making is God has appointment with you and that appointment happens in the time of life. So God wants to give you a child. The child is not going to be born when you eat gari. It has to be born through the natural processes. But the fact that it came through the natural process does not take God out of the equation because he gave you the appointment and he used the time of life to bring it to pass. And that is why you have to be careful whom you give glory to. Sometimes you may think, oh, my friend helped me. But who told your friend to help you? My office gave me promotion, but who inspired the promotion? Because if you understand, he has an appointment with you, but he uses the time of life. All right. So these are the two sequences in there. But there's a third time frame. It is not directly in the text, but it is real. When God spoke to Abraham and Sarah, he spoke to them in the time they were living in. Not in the appointed time, not in the time of life, but in the time they are living in. And so there's a third time frame that is what I call our time. Our time. The moment we are living in. <coughs> now. The challenge with expect, every expectation is that God fixes it at the appointed time. There's a time of life when it's going to happen, but you live in your time. And every human being lives in a time. And there's only one time zone that human beings live in. It's called now. No human being lives in yesterday. Have you met somebody who lives in yesterday? Going through town, you meet someone, bump into somebody, and you say, oh, I, I mean yesterday. No. Everybody you meet lives in the same time you live in now. No human being lives in the past, yesterday. No human being lives in the future. We anticipate the future, but we only live in now. God does not live only in now. He also lives in yesterday and he lives in tomorrow. So there's always a conflict of opinion between us and God. He, yesterday, today, forever is the same for him. For us, now is all that we know. So when he speaks to us, we don't know whether he's talking about tomorrow or now or even yesterday. So we have to figure out, is, is this going to happen or it has happened? Or it is happening? Because the only world we know is now. That is where the conflict becomes a big one. Why? Because now is dominated by our experiences. What we see what we hear, what we remember, that's all. So God says to Abraham, I will, I have an appointment with you, you will be the father of many nations. It's fixed, you will be that. But now, Abraham has no child. And the conflict is, how do I reconcile with my expected time or my appointed time and now? And the struggle of every Christian, every child of God is the struggle between times. Because God has an appointment with you 
and he has a time of life when it's going to happen, but you don't live in the appointed time, you live in the now time. And in the now time, you have nothing. So God makes you rich at the appointed time, but meanwhile, in the now, you are broke. How do you conduct your life? How do you manage your life? Because now is dominated by our experiences. And so our time is usually in conflict with God's appointed time. Our current reality and God's reality are happening simultaneously. I am sick. God says, I have healed you. I am broke. He says, you are wealthy. I have no child. He says, you are father of many nations. Who is telling the truth? Of course, we are telling the truth based on one time frame now. God is telling the truth because of a complete understanding of time. Because he knows the future and he has fixed an appointment with you. So after God has spoken to Abraham about appointed time and time of life, he said, I will return to you. I will return to you. Why did he say that? Abraham, you are in now. My word is in the future. But this word in the future will come back and become part of your now. So there's coming a point in your life that the appointed time will be in your time zone. It will be now. That is when everything God has spoken to you becomes a reality in your life. One of these days in your life, the thing you expected, you dreamt about, you prayed about, it, it felt like it would never, ever happen. All of a sudden, it will be now. Yeah. It will be now. And what seemed far away has now become your reality. But in between time, you need to survive. And that is where faith comes in. And that is why as believers, the most important thing to survive as a child of God is faith. Faith says, I don't have it now, but I believe I have it according to the word of God. Faith says, I am not at the appointed time now, but I take hold of my appointment. So that no matter the evidence of what I see, and what I feel and what I hear, I am persuaded that there is an appointment with God and he has my name on his shadow. So I came here to announce to somebody, there's something you've nursed in your heart. Maybe when you were even a kid, when you're six years old, you believe I'm going to do so and so. And people laughed at you and said, oh, you are a small boy, you don't know what you're talking about, but you've never left that. And it has never left you. You've always believed it. This is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. Maybe when you were 12 years old or 14 years old like myself or when, some time ago, something just came to you and you knew this is God's purpose for my life. Not this is what I want to be, but you just felt a divine presence telling you, this is what your life is going to be. But it's been 20 years since then, 30 years since then, 40 years since then, and you're wondering, is it going to happen? I came to announce to somebody, God says the appointment has never changed. He has never erased the appointment. And one of these days, your now will be the appointed time. The time you live in is going to be the time of manifestation of the purposes of God. Amen. Has it ever happened to you where things happen to you and it is deja vu? You know what deja vu is? Deja vu is seeing it again. It looks like it has happened before. You are sitting at a meeting and you feel like, I have sat in this 
I've been here before, but you haven't been there. Or the first time you go to a country, it looks like you've been there before. Some people say it's because in a previous life you went there. No, 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 it's not a previous life. No, no, no. no. It is because by faith you have lived in that place. It is God's appointment with you. You've always imagined yourself. You've always believed you'd be there. It's always lived with you. And then one day, the appointed time in the time of life becomes now your time. And that is where God says, I will return and Sarah shall have a son. God will return. I said God will return. What he planted in the future, he will return and bring it into your now. It's going to happen. And in the meantime, as a struggle, determining what should I do? Stand firm. Stand in the word of God. Trust the word of God. It may delay, but you will not be denied. God is not a man that he should lie. It may delay, but you will not be denied. You know, many times, even when we have forgotten God's appointment, he doesn't forget. And he makes it happen. And that's when we say, the thing I didn't expect has happened. You gave up, but he never gave up on you. You thought it was over, but he said it's not over. So do you have an expectancy in your heart? Does it have a divine origin? If you don't have a divine origin to your expectation, then you have to pray that you, it will, you'll get a divine one. Because God only watches over his word to perform it. But if you have it, and most of you have it, things you've nurtured in your heart, things you've struggled with, and it's been there, but you are now is con- conflicting it. But God says, I'll return. And when I return, I will settle the conflict. So what is your appointed time in the time of life will become your time frame. You're going to live in that time. You're going to live in prophecy. You're going to live in fulfillment of prophecy. You're going to live in fulfillment of destiny. You're going to live in your assignment. You're going to live in the place that God showed you you would be. So for everyone who has an expectancy, this morning I just want to pray with you. Maybe you have felt, ah, this thing, I don't know whether it will happen. Maybe I should just be realistic. I should just be realistic. What is realistic? Realistic is, let me just live in the now and forget about appointed time and time of life. But true realistic is let me be in the now, but still trust God for his appointed time. Because God's word is surer than any experience you have had. If you have an expectation, just lift up your hand to the Lord. I don't know what the expectation is. Okay. All right. I don't know what the expectation is. But God is a faithful God. And he will bring it to pass. Lift up your hands. Don't let your hands be weary. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. You have to stay strong. Aaron and Hur had to hold the hands of Moses. They held his hand so it will not come down. Don't let your hand come down. So Father, I pray for every uplifted hand and every heart living in faith, standing in faith, believing you, trusting you. That their faith will not grow weary. 
that they will not be destroyed by what they see and what they feel. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for supernatural strength to enter your people, that they will stand strong, nothing wavering, nothing broken, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that you will live in the time frame of God's appointed time. What you have believed in your heart, you will live in it. Your children will live in it. Your grandchildren will live in it. In the name of Jesus. Your business will live in it. Your family will live in it. And as you stand firm, may the Lord strengthen you. Like Abraham. Until you see the manifestation of his will for your life. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord praise somebody. I said give the Lord praise somebody. By the time, by the time we are finished with this series, you will see the manifestation. I said you will see the manifestation. Because I'm coming into agreement with you. That you will become what God wants you to be. Nothing less. Exactly what God showed you. You will become it. I said you will become it. Somebody say, I live in expectancy of my divine appointment and of the time of life to favor me in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.